For those uninitiated, creepypastas are scary stories passed around the internet like urban legends. They range from lost episodes of famous shows to summoning rituals, possessed video games to creatures that roam our world. Eventually, a website was created to collect these internet tales, and Creepypasta.com was born. Now, I haven't read every single story on the site, because I still have my sanity. So on this list, I will be counting down my favorites of the ones I've read. If your favorites don't appear on this list, it's not that I don't like it. I just haven't read it or heard of it. If you feel I missed an important one, though... Let me know in the comments. I may do another list next Halloween. Now, some criteria. I will be putting lost episode pastas, video game pastas, internet pastas, ritual pastas, etc. on this list. What I will not be putting on here is theory pastas, because I already covered some in my top 100 cartoon conspiracy theories list. But if there's one you want me to cover, I may do a standalone theory on it later. So leave that in the comments, too. I also will not be reading the whole pastas, just summarizing them. Some of these pastas are really long, and I don't feel like reading all of them. If there's a pasta on here you've not heard of and want to read it, I recommend pausing the video to do so, or skip that one. So, now that it's over, enjoy my top 100 creepy pastas. Sweet dreams. This image was taken from a split-second image of a Spongebob bootleg episode called Dumped. The tape it was taken from was discovered in a dumpster by five teenagers. Two of the teenagers committed suicide. One is currently missing, another refuses to comment on what he saw, and the last, who is currently in possession of the tape, is willing to give it to any paranormal team brave enough to watch it. While playing his old GTA San Andreas game, a man finds a strange NPC following him around. He calls him the Stalker, and everywhere he goes the NPC follows. Eventually he kills the NPC and finds that when the Stalker dies he drops a camera, which isn't in the game. The man picks up the camera and looks through the pictures only to find that they're real life pictures of him playing the game through the point of view of his window. When throwing away his school supplies after passing that year, a teenager stumbles upon a CD case. The kid takes it home and notices a disc labeled Chat Room 98. After loading it on his computer, he is surprised to find someone on the chat. The user's name was Darwin Clark. After conversating in the chat for some time, the teenager thinks he's just a programmed AI of some kind and begins to have some fun with him. That is, until Darwin begins telling about his life. He was born in 1867 and had two sisters that were murdered. Then Darwin says the teenager's name, David. He then tells him that the previous owners of the house he's living in had an accident like his two sisters had. The teenager tries to exit out, but can't. Then Darwin sends him one last message. Look behind you. The kid eventually gets up the courage to do a quick glance, and is relieved to see nothing behind him. As the teenager laughs, he turns back to his computer, only to see this face staring back. 
The teenager later commits suicide in a mental institution. This creepypasta gives you a look into the mind of an insane child who imagines a sombrero wearing dinosaur and some very gruesome other things. The name of the main character along with the events of that day change as he continually rewinds what took place. Now there is a lot of debate on whether this creepypasta is good, crap, or if it's a troll, but it's original and is too weird to explain since it's so hard to tell what's really going on. What if the title of this pasta doesn't get you interested in reading it? Then I don't know what would. After a horrible car accident, a man and his wife are rushed to the hospital. As the man waits outside the door, he prays that she survives. He would give anything for his wife to live. He walks over to the window and sees the doctors operating on her. After the operation, one of the doctors say she's gonna make it. The man is so overjoyed to hear this. But then the door opens and the doctors walk right through him. A man is walking home at night when he comes across the silhouette of a strange man, dance walking on the street towards him. He assumes that the guy is drunk, but the closer the man gets to the figure, the odder he seems. The strange man was still dancing with his head tilted up facing the sky, with large eyes and a cartoonish smile. Seeing this, the guy quickly crossed the street to avoid him. But when he looked back, he could see him standing, still parallel to him, with that same smile. So he continued to walk, but doesn't take his eyes off the man. Until for a split second, when he looks back across the street, and the man's gone. Then he sees him, now behind him, crouched down. The man keeps looking back at him as he walks. The creepy man begins taking giant steps like a cartoon character sneaking up on someone. So finally, the guy decides to run, but the smiling man continues to follow. So he stops and just watches him until out of nowhere the smiling man turns around and walks the other way. The man is relieved until he sees him come back into his eye view. But this time, instead of dancing or comically walking, he's running full speed at him. The guy had no choice but to run again. He continues running until he reaches a safer road with more car traffic. But the man had already vanished. He was never seen again. But beware when walking at night. Tail style curse is an old gaming urban legend that revolves around the game Sonic R. The game itself is terrible with crappy controls and a repetitive song is always playing in the background. The belief was that if you listen to that song backwards while in front of the mirror at exactly midnight, or after beating Super Sonic in a race with the character Tail style, then a curse will befall you. The tails that will come out of your TV and kill you. Or turn you insane and kill you. Either way, if you do this, you die at some point. 
That's what I'm driving at. In 1972, a strange woman stumbled into a hospital with blood on her white gown. She wasn't entirely human looking. She appeared like a mannequin, or Michael Jackson, and it also was holding a dead kitten between her teeth. The woman passed out, so nurses and doctors moved her to a room. She had no emotion whatsoever and didn't respond to any questions she was asked. The medical staff were about to strap her down to sedate her until authorities arrived. But then she smiled, revealing her spike-like teeth. This caused a nurse to freak out. The doctor looked at the woman and asked what the hell she was. To which the creepy woman jumped up ripped his jugular out with her teeth and whispered to him I am God. security guards arrived but she devoured them too she eventually escaped the hospital and hasn't been seen since the only surviving nurse named her the expressionless This pasta tells of a creature that lives in trees and hunts children. A man recounts the time he first saw the creature called the Seed Eater. The man finds a seed eater in his trees one day, asking for help. That night, the man hears tapping at his window and goes outside to see the seed eater again. The creature tells him that he must devour a child every so often to live forever and wants the man's help to get kids for him. The man agrees to help and the two begin making children go missing. This goes on for years until the seed eater tells the man he's ready for something bigger. An overweight woman, too lazy to exercise or cut down on eating, is reading through a magazine. She finds an ad for diet pills claiming she would lose weight instantly. So she went in line to order a month's supply. When it arrived, there were only 12 pills, and instructions saying to take one every month and not to eat any spicy food or drink alcohol. After taking the pills, she no longer felt hungry, and in fact was losing weight at an incredible rate without exercising. However, after a while, she had a horrible pain in her stomach, and rushed herself to the hospital. The doctor asked her if she'd eaten anything bad lately, but the woman said she hadn't eaten anything since taking her pills. She gave one of them to the doctor to test. He returned with troubling news. The pills contained the eggs of a tapeworm. Another game in urban legend. This one tells of a mysterious game and after you beat it, it erase itself from existence. From the reports people have made after playing Kill Switch, the game is a platformer where you have an option to play as a girl or a ghost-like creature as you move through a cave or mine shaft. The game isn't long, but when beaten it erases itself from your computer and is never able to be found again. What a waste of 15 bucks.
The Servine Birth is a disturbing video about... Well, it's gross. I spared you from having to see it, but if you want to find it, then go looking for it. Now, actually, I would show you the video, but YouTube doesn't allow it. Thanks, YouTube. The video shows a deer giving birth to a weird abomination. And you thought the birthing video in sex ed was bad. This is totally worse. Watching a baby deer come out of the mommy deer's ass. Not to mention it being what seems to be part deer, part human. Then the thing tries to stand. The video was supposedly made by an art student, so he must have been absent on the don't videotape a deer giving birth section of class. Rap Rat is a video that originated from the early 90s. Rap Rat was initially a video introduction for a board game of the same name. The video's cheesiness, pun intended, is quickly turned to terror when images of tortured children flash on the screen. It gives nightmares to children. And one of the kids who watched it grew up and did research on it. Turns out that the company that made it tortured their workers in a sweatshop. They forced children to operate the Rap Rat puppet. Writers stabbed their own hands or held white hot steel in order to get out of working on it. Even the company's executives killed themselves after being attacked by the spirit of a dead child. Now, whether the story behind the tape is real or not, since the company no longer exists, there's no way of finding out. But the video is actually real. An old woman who lived alone loved jigsaw puzzles. She would do a whole puzzle a day. One morning she finds a box at her door, so she opened it to find a new jigsaw puzzle. So she began completing it, but noticed something familiar about it. She was finally finished when she realized the puzzle was a picture. A picture of her sitting doing a puzzle, but taken from behind her. Lavender Town is a very creepy town found in the game Pokemon Red and Blue. The town itself is eerie, with many creepy things, like a ghostly hand that a crazy girl tells you she sees, and the hex maniacs being possessed, wanting to drink your blood. But the thing that has terrified us the most is the song. This song, as scary as it is, sounds even more scary when you learn its backstory. When the game was released in Japan, kids began killing themselves to this song. The song supposedly played at a pitch that the younger kids would make them go insane and ponder suicide. It is believed to be the reason for why Lavender Town's song changed in the American release of the game, and why in its sequel, the ghostly tower was changed to a radio tower. It is said that if you listen to this song for an hour, you will begin to ponder suicide.
This pasta raises the question. What happens when you don't see someone? Do they make faces? Make gestures? Do their faces mold into something else until you look back? How do you know there isn't something behind you that is there anytime you aren't looking? How would you know otherwise? How would you really know if there was or wasn't something behind you, always out of sight? The man receives the camera he ordered and opens it up to find that the previous owner had pictures still saved on it. He sets the camera to slideshow and sees that each picture showed a mailing address followed by pictures of brutal murders. He goes through them all in disgust. The final picture was his mailing address. It is thought that there is a mysterious group of people who are secretly gathering up ancient artifacts. They are known as the Holders. It is said that if you find one and are wise enough to solve their puzzles, they will give you one of the ancient artifacts. What the ancient artifacts do is unknown, but it is believed that if all of them are gathered and brought together, they will end the world. Somehow. There was once a My Little Pony fan game that was shrouded in infamy. Like all the My Little Pony games. This one was different, however. This game was called Lunar Game. The game was a simple platformer starring whatever the flying pony's name is. Anyway, the game was short and simple to beat, but if you did somehow manage to die in it, then you will be greeted with this image. Not only will the screen lock up, but you will find all your pictures, documents, and videos will be changed to this image with the description, The End Is Nay. A father is woken up by his daughter in the middle of the night. She says she had a bad dream. The father asks to tell him about it, but she says no. When asked why, she replies, because when I tell you about the dream, the thing wearing mommy's skin wakes up. Suddenly the covers behind him start to move. The theater is a mysterious game that was found. It apparently was a canceled game that was supposed to be an interactive theater experience where a player could go to different theaters and watch different movies. The game was canceled, probably because it was boring. Anyway, someone got a hold of the unfinished game. This game, however, doesn't play movies and is instead a game where you keep walking down the hall while being greeted by a messed up face ticket taker. You would continually get ported back down the hall while being greeted by the ticket taker who keeps saying Thank you. Please join the movie. The game was kind of like P.T., except friendlier. At some point, the posters 
that were hanging on the wall change and everything goes dark. The ticket taker appears before you and his voice is distorted. When you're ported back to the start, you get trapped with nothing else to do. This pasta is a summoning ritual similar to Bloody Mary, except with an original twist. Mr. Toothy is described as having an unfading grin similar to a clown's, and he will follow the summoner forever. Unlike Bloody Mary, you can only summon him while you're alone. Now, if you have the courage to say Mr. Toothy is a scaredy cat three times in the mirror in the dark with your eyes closed, you will be relieved to see he did not appear when you opened your eyes. But then you get an uneasy feeling. Why didn't he appear? Is he waiting? Picking his moment? Is he waiting for my guard to go down? You begin having nightmares. You stop answering your phone. You stop going outside. Every noise you hear makes you jump. Your sanity dwindles until one day you realize just how funny the whole thing is. A clown? Why would you be scared of a clown? You begin to laugh. It's all a bit funny, isn't it? You continue laughing and laughing and smiling and smiling. You begin to welcome Mr. Toothy. You want to meet this clown to see how scary he is. By this point, your features begin to change. White, long teeth. Your fingers grow longer and longer. Your face's color changes. Hey, I haven't seen my friends in weeks. I should make a visit. You finally decide to go into the bathroom to freshen up. Since the incident, you've been so scared of mirrors. But now, you look at yourself. And staring back at you is a clown. But Mr. Toothy is you now. Looks familiar? According to this pasta, this man has supposedly been reported by thousands of people from all over the world. He shows up in their dreams and gives advice. However, all the people who have seen this man claim to have never seen the man before in their life, and his identity is still unknown. Misfortune.gb is another mysterious game that was found, this time on the original Game Boy. The game looks like the original Pokemon with its sprite design, but it is far from family fun. The game starts in a gothic-like building, and you play as a little boy. You are greeted by a mysterious creature that is implied to be the devil himself. He asks if you wish to challenge him, and the game pretty much progresses like a normal puzzle game with riddles and different choices. However, in one instance, though, if you will come across a choice of doors to enter, before you, the devil will tell you that misfortune will befall your loved ones if you are wrong. If you choose the wrong one, you will game over and be greeted by a picture of the devil that says I am God. 
People who've played the game and lost report going through a hard depression. Others kill themselves. Now if the player turns the game off before they arrive to the game over screen, then the player will be fine. So it is believed that the game over screen itself might cause some misfortune to grip the player. Now if you're wondering how to get this game to play, but can't find it on sale, you might already have it. If you are saying, no, I definitely don't own this game, check your Game Boy games right now. The strangest part about the game is that it was never released and no one has ever admitted to its creation or existence. Yet the game has appeared in many people's collections of Game Boy titles without them knowing. Suicide Mouse is the first lost episode creepypasta on this list. The video can be found online pretty easily and is about a total of 9 minutes, but I've never been able to sit and watch any more than 3 minutes of it. It's very creepy. In the video it shows Mickey Mouse frantically walking towards the right of the screen with a horrifying expression on his face. Organ music begins to be heard as Mickey continues to walk. This repeats for almost five minutes until the screen turns black. And when it returns, Mickey has a smile on his face as he hears moaning and screams for the remainder of the time. The screen then becomes warped and ghostly figures begin to appear before the ending. Mickey Mouse's logo. Our second lost episode creepypasta. In what first began as a shitty quality version of The Simpsons, quickly turned into something terrifying. In this episode, the Simpsons family was on a plane until Bart foolishly opened a window and was sucked out, falling to his death. It then cuts to Homer on the ground beside his dead son. There's another cut to Bart's funeral as his principal, his family, and his friends weep over his open casket. They all say goodbye in their own way. And then cuts to a shot of everyone leaving the funeral. On the other tombstones, it is believed they accurately predicted the dates celebrities died, like Michael Jackson and Gary Coleman. And, uh, you know, all the celebrities that just so happened to have died the year this was written. Anyway, it then cuts to moments where the family begins to fall apart and fight amongst each other. The Simpsons are visibly different now. It all ends with Lisa staring into the camera. Other people claim to see this image flash on the screen. A man took a trip to the abandoned old pilot research building that he had learned about online and discovers a computer port, so he plugs in his laptop. After fixing it so it would turn on, he realizes some odd things are on the computer. For one, instead of Google, it was sending him to a site called www.patriotsearch.com. And when he uses it, 
he finds news reports from a parallel universe. Some of the news stories were a second American Civil War, France falling victim of a terrorist attack by a thermonuclear device at its borders. There was a White House shooting spree. Australia and Canada joined something called the Patriot Alliance. UK terrorists demanding Scottish independence. And German nuclear physicists arrested for treason for the study of alternate dimensions. In this universe, he uncovers that the planet is in chaos, with the US and UK being faded out by anarchy. There's population problems, and the only crimes people were being arrested for were treason and fraud, leading to murders, thefts, and rapes all across the country. Trump for president. Anyway, the man discovers that someone from that dimension was now trying to download info about our world. He rips the laptop's cord out of the wall. The story ends with a warning not to let anyone from the other world learn of our world. And especially, don't let them in. This pasta is about a haunted copy of the game Pokemon Silver. In it, you play gold as he is sent through a hellish nightmare. The person who got the game loads up an old save of the previous owner, which you should never do in Creepypasta Land. He notices that the owner had been trapped in the bell tower with five unknowns and a six Pokemon named Hurry. That was a weak syndiquilt. He also notices that the owner had obviously used some form of hacks to get all the badges and unlimited polka dollars. It then occurs to the player that the five unknowns spelt the word leave. When he finds the way out, he hears the sound you hear of the unknowns on the radio. If you go to the ruins, Freaked out, he progresses through the horror. After going down a long hallway, he is taken to a new location. He then gets a message saying Hurry had fainted. When he looks at his party, he finds Hurry is gone. Instead, he is replaced by unknowns that now say he died. Then, later, his party Pokemon change again. This time, he had five unknowns again that spelled dying, and the sixth Pokemon being a shiny Celebi that was cut in half. His picture of gold changed too, showing gold with blood dripping from his eyes, and no arms or legs. He then battles Red, the protagonist from the first game. He had a Pikachu that looked very sad. The match was made impossible for the player to win. After the match, he is transported to the starting house in the game. The gold was now transparent. He checks his party. Six unknown saying, no more. He phases through the wall and keeps floating until he encounters gold's regular sprite, which tells him goodbye forever. This time, the caption box was just question marks. Used Nightmare, which transported gold to what appeared to be Lavender Town. He was trapped now in his grave. Forever. When he clicked on the text box, it came up and said, Rest in peace.
One night, a woman here is knocking on her door. She goes to investigate, but the knocking had stopped. When she looked outside, no one was there. She goes back to sleep, but is woken up again. This time, to the door slamming. She checks it again, only to see the word SMILE written on the door. She grabs her phone to call the police. And she realized someone has typed on her phone, I told you to smile. She fled the home, hiding out at her neighbor's. There, she calls the police, which arrive, but find no evidence of a break-in, and advise her to go back and get some sleep. She goes back, but first, she hides a camera to record her while she sleeps. When she checked the footage the following morning, she finds something horrifying. Something skinny and pale crawled out from under her bed and stared at her sleeping for an hour. Then it walked over and stared at the camera. It then crawled back under the bed. The woman was mortified because it was still under the bed she was sitting on. This gaming creepypasta is different from the others because it's actually true. In the 80s, there was a new game that hit the arcades called Berserk. It's a game about a little green stick figure that goes around shooting robots. A rather fun yet difficult game. I say difficult because if a player took too long to kill all the robots, they would be attacked by a bouncing yellow ball named Otto. Otto may not seem that threatening, but he holds the distinction of being the only video game character that has killed a person in real life. Now I don't mean he jumped out and killed the player like Tails now. He is such a stressful video game enemy that he calls an overweight child to have a heart attack and die while playing Berserk at an arcade. And the creepiest part is that the last thing the child saw was Otto's smiling face as he suffered. In the 1990s, there was a game called Mr. Mix. It was a game that it was meant to teach typing to children. However, once you beat a certain level, the difficulty would make it impossible to beat. The sounds would get terrifying, and many children began having nightmares about Mr. Mix. One day, a hacker got a hold of the game and found out what happens when you beat the impossible level 4. The game crashes, and images of deformed faces and gruesome murders appear on the screen. If you close out of them, or attempt to delete the game, your computer will crash, destroying your hard drive. When the hackers beat the fifth level, well, they declined to talk about it. In fact, a few months later, they all went missing. A year later, though, one of the hackers was arrested for attempting to kidnap a child while wearing a chef's uniform. When questioned, he only said, I am Mr. Mix. Shane the Killer is pretty much just a female Jeff the Killer. Unlike Jeff's catchphrase of go to sleep, she says, don't go to sleep. It's like two fighting parents 
Go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Mommy, Daddy, please stop fighting. Anyway, she is one of the few female creepypasta characters, so I had to put her on the list somewhere. A man is surprised when a man in a suit, assumed to be the devil, appears. So, who do you want me to kill? The man thinks of all the people that ruined his life, from his verbally abusive old teacher, to the girl he went out with in middle school that made up rumors that he raped her. He thinks long and hard about which person ruined his life the most, and then he tells the devil who. At that moment, the person he chose dies instantly person that ruined his life the most was himself. This pasta is about how when people are being raped, they create their own reality, very similar to the one they already live, except they aren't being raped. They can live in this false reality for what feels like years until someone in the dream tells them, out of the blue, to wake up. The creepypasta makes you question if your life right now is real, or a creation to repress a traumatizing event. And also, you need to wake up. There is a supposed YouTube channel called Username666 that is pure evil. The channel was once very active, with a video being posted every hour or so. The channel was known for posting bloody images and gore porn galore. YouTube luckily took the channel down, but you can still gain access to it. If you type in Username666, search and keep refreshing the page, you will notice immediate changes to the layout with the screen becoming dark and bloody. It will then be sent to username 666 channel. Once there, the screaming and disgusting video will drive you mad, and you will want to leave the channel. But you can't, so you try to close the program. No luck. So you try to turn the computer off. Nope, sorry. You are trapped on that channel with nothing to do. Now whether this is true or not, I don't recommend you go looking for username 666. You'll be sorry if you find it. creepypasta. This one revolves around a video of a red man in an all red room who just stares at the camera before it flashes to an image of the man smiling maniacally. Now the video is really short but some people claim that there was once a longer version of it that was online but the last person that watched the whole thing went insane and refuses to speak about what she saw. Pokemon Creepy Black version was a hacked game of the original Pokemon Red and Blue. When it came to the point where you selected your starter Pokemon, you would also have another party Pokemon. Ghost. Not a ghost type, but the sprite of the one. In Lavender Town's tower. The ghost had only one move. Curse. And when battling other Pokemon, text box would say, 
the opponent's Pokemon is too afraid to attack. When you use the move curse, the Pokemon would vanish. And after the battle, when the trainer's sprite appears to say good game or whatever, you could use the move curse on the trainer as well. When the battle ended, that trainer would no longer be in front of you anymore. Using the ghost type, the player is able to beat the game very fast. When you defeat the Elite Four, and the credits end, the player is immediately placed in a battle. This time against the ghost. But your sprite is of an old man now. And you can't use any of your Pokemon in your party. You can fight. But since you don't have any attacks, you just use Struggle, which does nothing to the ghost. When your character was down to 1 HP, the ghost uses Curse, and the screen turns black. The only option you have left is to turn the Game Boy off. But when you turn it back on, it erased your save data. Zalgo is pretty much the equivalent of a creepypasta god that takes inspiration from H.P. Lovecraft's works. Zalgo is said to be able to escape from his dimension through the eyes and mouth of people or images. The eyes are black with tentacle-like things coming out of their mouth and sockets. If you were wondering, about what those pictures of famous cartoon characters or famous people that look like they have black eyes. That's what they're meant to be. Zalgo can also drive people to madness, plaguing them with nightmares and visions of his arrival. Zalgo has also spawned a creepypasta religion who honestly believe that Zalgo exists and they want to summon him with a sacrifice. To summon the Midnight Man, you will need to follow these steps at exactly midnight. First, write your full name on a sheet of paper and put one drop of your blood on it. Put a pencil in front of the front door of your house. Turn all lights off, light a candle, and place it over your name on the paper. Knock on that door 22 times before 12 o'clock. Open the door, blow out the candle, then close the door. The midnight man is now in your house. When you relight the candle, the game begins. Game, you might be asking. Oh yes, summoning the Midnight Man is like playing a game of hide and seek. You must wander your house until exactly 3.33 a.m. and avoid the Midnight Man at all costs. If your candle goes out, that means he's near you, and you must relight the candle immediately or else he gets you. It is believed that if the Midnight Man catches you at any time before 3.33, he will cause hallucinations of your greatest fears until that time arrives. This is the origin of one of the most believable gaming creepypastas ever to 12 year olds. Anyway, the story originates on a Minecraft forum where a player reported a strange default skinned character walking around in his world even though his server was closed and he was alone. Other people then also began reporting this incident to the forum. More and more people wrote about their experience until someone with the name Harold Bryan wrote one word stop and then the forum was closed from that point on the being 
was known as Herobrine, and reports continue to this day. Some people theorize that Herobrine is the spirit of Notch's dead brother, who has possessed Minecraft servers. Though Notch denies the existence of Herobrine, and has proven that he doesn't even have a brother, the existence of Herobrine is still speculated, because each update to the game says they have finally removed Herobrine. Cleverbot is a computer program AI that can very accurately respond to your questions or statements. Sometimes. But some people report very odd things being said by Cleverbot. Like predicting when the person will die, that it wishes to kill, or even makes references to creepypastas like Ben Drowned. I actually have seen some pretty fucked up shit on Cleverbot. However, I didn't have my screen capture software then, and I couldn't get it to replicate it. I remembered it being very creepy, asking how old I was and then if I loved it, and at one point it guessed my name. Very fucked up. In fact, to be honest though, I learned about Cleverbot through the Creepypasta website, and I could see how this Creepypasta might be true. So try to get some creepy clever bot responses, and leave them in the comments below. Happy Appy was a Nick Jr. show that starred a realistic app on a stick with blue eyes. Only a few episodes of the show aired. The first one was pretty normal, for a kid show standards, but the other episodes were awfully scary. In the second episode, Appy gets hurt and the kids help him by getting him fruit, one of which was an apple. He also predicts an earthquake that hit Japan that year. In the third and fourth episodes, Appy stares at the camera with a large creepy smile. As the episodes go on, they get creepier, as Happy Happy begins getting more terrifying and more realistic, as the kids on the show even start to be scared of him too. The show was obviously cancelled and Nickelodeon has gone to great lengths to make sure they erase his existence. In Japan, a farmer named Omi, who had a lot of land, was out on the field. The field was very vast, that once he got to a certain point, he couldn't see his house anymore. The man's wife was pregnant, so she was in the house instead of helping in the field. One day, the man looked back on his way to the end of the field and noticed a large creature climbing on his roof. He raced back, but noticed the house was empty. When he called her name, she was nowhere to be found. Confused, he walked down the path. When he saw the same creature walking down the hill towards him, he grabbed a weapon and went towards it. But when he saw the dark blue beast, he was angry. He demanded to know where she was. When the creature said, She's still in your house. It's not too late. You can still save her if you hurry. Omi ran back to the house. But no one was there again. When he turned, the creature was suddenly there. Omi asked why he said she was in the house, but he replied, I said no such thing. Your wife is at the end of the field. You must go. If you hurry, you can still save her. The man, so exhausted, runs again to the end of the field. No one was there. 
he falls to his knees. The creature returns. The man accuses the creature of eating her. He replies, I have no need for her blood. The man asks for the creature's name, but he says, I am Omi. The man, angry, argues with the beast until it occurs to him everything the creature has said was a lie. A supposedly true story about a man who reflects on supernatural occurrences he witnessed. A creepy woman with a white dress, red shoes, childlike voice, and a huge grin harasses him and his family. Though the premise of a woman offering an orange isn't scary, the constant attacks and the inability to do anything about her is terrifying. A man finds out that his wife, her mother, and his grandmother have also been plagued by these immortal beings. The grandmother was visited by a man in a suit. He too is later harassed by the man in the suit too. The man keeps trying to find answers to what they are. But what I like is, you never get answers to the questions. It's never explained the significance of the orange. It leaves you wondering. But I like it. Because, unlike most pastas, it presents a lot of evidence like photos, too. However, it does suffer from a kind of crappy ending, but all in all, a pretty scary tale. Tiki Topi was the nickname given to a bullied boy who suffered from Tourette's, which made him twitch uncontrollably. He also couldn't feel pain. His sister died in a car crash while Toby escaped with injuries he couldn't feel. His abusive alcoholic father around the same time tries to come back into his life. One night when he couldn't sleep, he started having nightmares about the crash. He looked out his window, and he sees a thin, faceless creature standing beneath the street lamp before he passes out. Toby began going insane. He began chewing the skin off his fingers, seeing ghosts in the corner of his eyes, losing memories. He was eventually sent to a shrink, where he sees the figure again. The creature haunts him again one night. This time it taunts him with the body of his mangled sister. He falls down and sees the white-faced creature standing before him with an army of children behind him, with bloody eyes. He awakes believing it was a dream, only to be plagued with voices in his head telling him to kill his father. It became too much. Toby grabbed the knife on the table and stabbed him to death. After hearing his mother scream, he grabbed the hatchet in the garage and set the forest on fire with matches and gasoline before sprinting into the woods to escape the police. While in the burning woods, Toby awaits his fate until a white hand is put on his shoulder. Several months later, his mother is watching the news when a news report comes on saying several people have been murdered with a hatchet. The police suspect Toby didn't die in the fire and that he's still out there somewhere. A personal favorite of mine, Doug's Real Life was a lost episode creepypasta about the titled character Doug, losing touch of reality with his daydreams. 
the intro to the episode was different, with Doug and his dog not appearing when they should have. The actual episode starts with Doug writing in his journal, as he normally does. Then cuts to him at breakfast, telling his family about a big test that was coming up. At that moment, weird flashes appear, with unreadable text. It then cuts to Doug walking to school. He then daydreams about the teacher yelling at him that he failed. The kids laugh at him. The screen turns into a negative when he gets to school and he walks down the halls with all unfamiliar characters around him. He sits at his desk when the episode cuts to him walking home again. His dog Porkchop turned into a rotting pile of meat and his house was a wreck. He sits at the dinner table with his family when the phone rings. Doug believes it's his teacher calling to tell his parents that he failed the test. Doug imagines his parents turning into horrific monsters and yelling at him. Doug gets scared, apologizes, and runs from the table and heads into his room. He picks up his journal and writes one sentence. I can't tell which one is real. A man who takes the subway to work every day and a believer in the paranormal notices a homeless person has a strange power. The man first notices the homeless man would say random things to different people as they got on and off the subway. When an overweight woman passed him, he said pig. A skinny old man passed him, he said cow. A fat man went by, he said potato. A business person went by, he said human. He would listen to the homeless person and try to find a pattern in what he said. Rabbit? Tomato? Onion? Could he see what people were in a past life? He walked by the homeless man, and he said bread to him. The man asked the homeless person if he has an ability of some kind. The homeless man says, he does. He has the power to tell the last thing a person has eaten. The man did have toast for breakfast and is impressed. But all I can think of is what a useless power that is. If you didn't understand it, like the first time when I read it, re-listen to it again. The Grifter was a disturbing video found on the internet that shows many gruesome things. Torture, satanic ritual, dead bodies, infant sacrifice, and it is believed that repeated viewings of this video will make people depressed, nauseous, have horrible dreams, and even contemplate suicide. The weirdest part is attempting to copy the video will always fail. Naturally, the video can't be put on YouTube, but you can try to find it on your own if you dare. Jacob Emery was pretty much a jack of all trades in a small town. When he leaves town for a few years, he comes back a different man. He was more energetic and social. He also came back with a souvenir, a black stick that he could use to draw amazing pieces of art. The art itself wasn't amazing, but what was, was anything he drew with the black stick would become interactable. To demonstrate, he drew a circle on a piece of paper and when he turned the paper, the circle would drop and roll to the bottom. 
of the paper like a rock. The townsfolk decided to have an art show featuring Jacob's work. He would take suggestions from the audience on what to draw and see come to life. At the end of each show, he had to cover the wall with white paint. However, Jacob began to change and lose sanity. He began drinking, and his art shows began to get disturbing and creepily drawn monsters fighting knights. The last show he did was completely hammered. He was taking suggestions from the audience until someone suggested he draw himself. Drunk Jacob did what he was told, and when he finished, he realized his mistake. All the other drawings turned at once to stare at the drawing of Jacob. Then, the drawing pulled out from his pocket a black stick of his own and proceeded to draw a door. All of his creations began to exit the wall, causing chaos. And Jacob, who was too drunk to remember to put out white paint to cover the wall, was dragged by his creations through the door the drawing had made. The place burnt down, and the government covered up the event. But there's no telling how many of Jacob's creation escaped the fire. Wait, did you see that too? Well, this is gameplay from Sonic.exe, one of the most famous gaming creepypastas. I had to put it on here because, though at the time it was amazing, it now has become a cliché. But this was the first gaming pasta I ever saw, so for nostalgia reason, I put it on the list. Sonic.exe was a possessed copy of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. As you can see from the title screen, Sonic is not the hero in this game, and instead attacks his friends and kills them. First you play as Tails, who, after running along, notices dead animals all across the ground. He begins to act scared. He comes across Sonic, who then chases Tails. And when he catches him, you hear him scream. At the end of the character select screen, Tails is no longer playable, and it appears tortured looking like Sonic. The same happens to Knuckles and Eggman. When there are no more playable characters, Sonic's face appears, with text saying, I am God.